Good morning. Morning, everyone. Uh, this is a session called Finland with Just a Carry On. Uh, my working title for it was uh, was light travel. Um, who's who came here with Just a Carry On? Yeah, okay. If you didn't have to, right? Uh, to the rest of you, shame on you. Right, my name is Paul Wojcicki Jarotski, as Sammy was trying to explain. The only part of my last name, the dash, is what people tend to uh, to be able to pronounce. Uh, plus the fact that I'm dashing from place to place a lot. Uh, this year alone has been uh, over 80-something flights. Now, I do envy people like uh, Paula Janusz Januszkiewicz, you know Paula? Um, I think she has uh, just about 200 flights this year. Uh, I'm not up to that level yet, but uh, uh, but I do travel quite a lot, and uh, I'd like to think that I travel light. Now, I don't take this to the extreme, and here's a quote for you uh, from the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, a uh, really nice book, uh, where uh, it's suggested that you can travel with just a towel. Now, that's a little extreme, and uh, it doesn't really fit our our business needs. Right? Plus, we're not intergalactic travelers. So um, this also doesn't fit our style, but there are people that travel with very, very uh, limited sets of stuff, of the things that they bring. Um, this is uh, Rolf Potts, uh, a journalist who tried to travel around the world with uh, just the things in his pockets, with just what he was wearing, with some clothes bunched up in, um, in, in little bags or, or his jacket. Uh, for uh, for uh, travel for leisure, uh, that's, that's fine. But as business travelers, travelers we need uh, a little more. Right? So that's cool. And there, he's not just the only one with this idea. There's other people that, that do that, that just drop all their stuff, leave everything behind, and, and, and travel really, really light. Uh, around the globe, into various climates, into various cultures. But we're business travelers, so we're trying to um, perhaps take a little more stuff. Um, what we're going to cover is the idea behind traveling light. Why do we want to travel light? Um, we'll find out what to pack, and we'll find out what to pack it into. So that's the agenda. Um, it might take me the full 15 minutes. Ask questions and contribute if you can. Okay, so first the why. Why do we want to travel light? Why do we want to leave as much stuff behind at home? Uh, first of all, mobility. Being able to make that last dash to the airport. Get there, uh, yes I tend to get there at the very, very last minute. And having just a carry-on has um, many times kept me on that flight, um, even though the flight was uh, was closed. Uh, a couple of uh, people were kind enough to reopen the flight because they saw I, w I just had a carry-on. I didn't have to check in any luggage. They didn't have to handle it. If I was carrying anything else, uh, I wouldn't have made the flight. I wouldn't have uh, made my engagement the following day. Um, the opposite of this, uh, if you have just a carry-on, you can uh, give up your flight. Um, to if for, for an overbooked flight, for example, you can get bumped to the next one. If your luggage isn't in the hold already, you can just volunteer. You can switch flights. You can, you can uh, take an earlier flight. You can also use other modes of transport besides uh, taxis, besides, um, besides trains. If you can carry it, that's great. If you can carry your own load. Two, economy. Um, a taxi from the airport in Tokyo costs about $300. If you have a lot of bags to take with you, you're going to need someone to handle those bags, to put them into the taxi. You're not going to bring them on the bus. The bus is about 30. Over here from the airport, if if uh, you take a taxi, fifty to sixty euro. Uh, the bus is about six, right? So, economy. 
security. You're not giving up your luggage. You're not putting it in the hold. You're not giving it to the taxi driver uh, for someone to mishandle, to, to lose, to misplace, to um, perhaps even steal. And serenity. Being able to, well, just be at peace with the fact that um, that you're, you don't have to worry about all this stuff. It's enough that we have a lot of stuff at home uh, that we have to uh, manage, buy, uh, fix. Uh, during your travels, you don't want to have all that baggage in the not literal sense of the word. So will you accept those as, as wise? OK. There might be another one that may not be as important to you, uh, but might be important to the environment. You're buying less things. You're carrying less things. You're, you're causing less pollution. OK, now what to pack. There's two schools. First one is to make a list. And that's great. Um, you can note down the things that you use uh, during a week at home and make sure that you take those things or, or appropriate equivalents to, um, to have during your trip. Uh, you can use a list that's available online. And there's many people producing these, uh, travel bloggers, um, but your list should be your own. It should be customized to what you do. Uh, why make a list? Um, so that you don't forget anything, obviously. But also so that you have a um, uh, some, something to start with when you want to start crossing out, when you want to start reducing uh, what you're taking. Right? Uh, review your list. Uh, see if there's alternates. See if there's um, lighter versions or smaller versions to what you're taking. Um, again, the list should be customized to your own needs. Uh, so I'm not going to give you an exact listing of what you should bring. Um, you'll, you'll have to work that out on your own. The other school of thought is to not make a list. Um, be spontaneous. Try out different things. Experiment with um, various sizes of items, with various um, quality of items with a number of different things that you take and then um, have this become a habit. Now I travel um, quite a lot. I'm away for uh, two or three weeks uh, out of every single month. Uh, so for me packing is a habit. I don't have to think about what will I bring? Did I, did I um, leave something at home? Uh, will I need this? Will I need that? For my regular business travels I just go according to a routine, put that in my case. Some of the things actually always stay in my case. I divided up the what should you pack into four different areas. To clothing, electronics, uh, toiletries, and all the other stuff. Now with the clothing, can you see that on the slide? Ah, in the background there. Um, they say that, well, wh why am I starting with clothing? It's, I think, the most important piece here. Um, they say trousers are more important there than your wife. There's uh, many places where you can go without your wife, and there's very few places where you can go without your trousers. Right? So clothing, something that we definitely need to bring along on a trip. I'm not going to tell you exactly what you need, but some ideas. Minimize. Minimize as to the number of items. Um, you, you may want to have many outfits, but to have many outfits, you don't need many pieces of, pieces of clothing. You can mix and match, and you should do that. And one of the things that you can do to mix and match is layer. 
have just a shirt, have a shirt with a jacket, have a shirt with a sweater, people won't notice that you're wearing the same shirt. For this to work out, you need to color match. And if you don't know how to do that, well, ask your girlfriend, wife, mother. Um, if you have nice sets of match clothing, then, then you can pick any few pieces out of those, and that becomes an outfit. Right? Concept. Very easy. What I have is I have uh, actually three sets of travel clothes, uh, two blue sets of, of shirts, one pink set of shirts, and I just alternate them during the weeks. I go back home for the weekends and I drop my laundry off and I uh, just repack a new set of, uh, set of clothes. Choose the right fabrics. This is important if uh, you want to arrive at your destination and have the uh, clothes uh, crease free. And there's, well, there's various things you can do. You can, you can pick, um, pick synthetic fabrics which uh, don't crease as easily. Uh, think of sports clothing. Uh, sometimes you don't want to do that, especially with things like, like a shirt. Uh, and you might have to iron. Learn to do that. Or uh, know that you can, at most hotels, get the shirts ironed. Right, but that's, that's really obvious. Uh, also, the right fabrics will keep the uh, weight low and uh, will allow you to pack more densely. Learn to wash. Yes. Um, you might have to wash some things along the way. You don't have to pack a set of clothes for each and every single day. Now, what I'll do is um, I'll take my case. That's why I brought it. And I'm not going to show you the exact items I have, but I just want to show you how I packed. Oh, and a disclaimer, uh, I didn't come here just for the one day with a case this size. Uh, I'm uh, here in Finland this week, uh, as well as, um, as being in Sweden over the weekend and then uh, in Norway for work uh, all next week. So I'm, I'm packed for, what, nine days into this. This is what the case looks like. And yes, I do have a set of shirts for every single day of work. I don't want to be washing shirts. I don't want them to, um, to be laundered by the hotel. I can fit um, four shirts into that. And then, of course, there's Casual Friday. On the other hand, I don't need to take eight sets of undergarments, right? You can wash those, and uh, you don't need to spend a lot of time doing this during, uh, during the evening. You know, five minutes at the hotel, I end up in some boring places sometimes, and I can devote the five minutes in the evening. That's not a problem. What else can you do? Buy it locally. Right? Why not? Um, you see something in a store, get it there. Um, you can get some really nice items sometimes. Right? I got this locally. Hey, and it fits. Great. I sometimes use eBay. Or when I travel to uh, to England, I um, I order shirts to be mailed to my hotel. Uh, if you travel to some more exotic locations, um, buying clothing locally also allows you to fit in better, fit in with the locals, right? Now we're we are in IT, so. This is important for us, electronics. First rule, minimize. Sound familiar, right? It's a trend. Minimize uh, the size of items. Uh, and phones are getting larger and larger. I just upgraded to this. It's humongous. But minimize the number of items. You've got a bigger one. Uh, minimize the number of items, 
Right? Do you really need your laptop, your tablet, your Kindle, your phone, your MP3 player, and your camera? Who brought all of those? Okay, by show of hands, who has at least four electronic items with them? Oh, yeah. Okay, three, two. Okay, I've only got two, right? My, my laptop and my phone. And this is, this is pretty universal. So what you're, what you're trying to do is to find universal devices. This uh, is supposed to make a good camera as well. And it's an MP3 player. It's a notepad. It's a whole bunch of other things. It's, it's, it's a data carrier. Uh, do I always carry a laptop? Um, not really. Uh, sometimes I make do with just the surface, and uh, it's fine for some purposes. This week I expect to be doing some photo editing, uh, so I wanted to have this. It's going to be really your choice, but try to see what you can make do without. Try to optimize. Because each uh, electronic item that you bring also means that you have to bring uh, the right power supplies, the right adapters. So reduce the number of adapters. Uh, how can you do that? Customize. I don't think we have a, a way of getting a close-up here, but this is, this is my tiny USB cable. I don't need anything longer than this. And this is both a mini USB cable and a micro USB cable in one. I don't need the bulk. This is the only item that I'm going to be connecting. Mouse. My mouse serves uh, also as a presenter. Right? I can go that way and back. Can, can I go back? There was a way of going back. Oh, there we go. To go back, and I can uh, I can use this to to draw things, and I can u also use this as a sort of laser projector thing. That's a function of PowerPoint. Does anybody use a laser projector still? Like a laser pointer, I mean, sometimes. I find that um, I don't really use that functionality, because if I do, I'm looking at the screen and not at my students. Right? So I, I actually try to avoid that. Also, two great features of this is I can blank the screen like this or like that so that my students pay attention to me instead of what's going on up on the slide. So find devices that are universal. A question, yes? So what Sammy's saying is that there's, um, there's an application available. You're, of course, not going to see it but I do have it installed on this Windows phone uh, called the Office Remote, and you can, you can use this if you feel more comfortable. If you, that you're tes texting, right? Yeah. Yeah, so you can you can use the laser pointer on the phone. Also, what I sometimes do is I preload the uh, the slides onto my phone so that I can uh, have my notes here. Of course, yes, it, it looks like I'm te texting or doing something else in front of my students, but um, but some people do understand it, and it comes in useful in some situations. Check what equipment will be available. I, I knew that there was going to be a laptop here that I could use for my presentation. And I didn't really need to take my laptop out today. But since I'm going to be here for another week, um, or I'm going to be away from home for another week, I need that as a method of communication, as, as my other apps and, and data. But the data itself can be accessed remotely or can be taken from some other device. right? So uh, do things remotely, and this goes for uh, things like email, obvious, uh, host exchange, office 365. 
um, uh, things like remote labs. And I think Ronald talked to you about remote labs. Right? You don't need to bring your laptop with virtual machines. You can just make do with a tablet and then just access everything remotely. Or set up a system at home and, and show from home. Um, Also, um, backing up, have a stored version of your slides, of your presentation, of your speech, of your data. And we should straight away be thinking uh, SkyDrive in this case. Right? It syncs, it's wonderful, it goes across devices. I, just in case, keep another copy or email it to myself. So if disaster strikes and I do forget my case, do lose something if uh, uh, I drop my computer, which has happened uh, yesterday, and I was very worried that the whole thing was going to just crack, explode, whatever. Uh, I still have a copy. Also, you can get a copy of your entire environment. This is uh, a iron key. Um, now, uh, it's been, it's, it's, it's a physically encrypted drive. It's uh, uh, been bought by another company um, now, but uh, Imation. Um, but they still make these, and they make a nice version that works with Windows to Go. Have you heard of Windows to Go? An environment that you can put onto a, um, you, a removable device, plug it into a computer that supports booting from USB, and you've got your entire system on there. Of course, there's licensing requirements, and, and I don't want to go into that, but you know it's possible. And it's not just Windows doing this, uh, in case you care. Uh, more adapters. This is a little tiny audio cable. If you can see that, really short. Uh, if I rent a car, I like to take my own music into the car. They usually have a port like that. Uh, and the last item. Uh, this USB power adapter that I don't really need because my laptop provides power even overnight when it's closed because there's a USB port that stays on. And that's my minimal electronics kit. I don't need anything else during a trip. Am I missing anything? A universal power adapter. Um, you mean for a laptop? Okay, so I don't have an adapter for traveling to other countries, right? If I was um, if I was heading to the UK, uh, which I do once every few months, uh, I'd have an adapter for um, for both my my laptop uh, and for my phone. And if you uh, if you hop from continent to continent, yes, you can equip yourself with with a universal adapter. Thanks for that one. Now this is the toiletries section, and it contains various items uh, for personal hygiene, for, for well-being. Again, minimize. Minimize in amount, and minimize in size. How many creams do you actually need? My kit... My kit looks like this. Yes, it's, it's two separate items. Uh, these are my liquids and gels. And this is all the other stuff. Um, I find that just just being nicer um, to uh, to carry and to present to security without them having to look at my toothbrush and things. Uh, do you really need to buy the store miniatures? Um, on one hand, no. You can use generic containers, uh, but um, TSA, if you travel to the U.S., doesn't really like unlabeled containers. Uh, so what you can do is you can take a bottle of uh, shampoo and just refill it with shampoo. Like buy a, buy a little tiny bottle, travel size, and then just refill it with your own big, more economic shampoo. Find alternatives. There's, um, there's things that you can substitute for a lot of the items that you have. So if I have a, for minimizing, tube of toothpaste. Right, simple uh, item, but there's toothpaste concentrate. There's toothpaste powder. 
which is lighter, it's smaller. It doesn't need to go into a bag that's presented to security. If you're going away for a long time, you can, you can try doing that. You can try living off the land. By that, I mean living off of what's in the hotel. You don't need to bring your own shampoo, your, your own soap, right? That's, that's there. If you're not staying in hotels, that's another problem. But for business travelers, that's enough. Buy it locally. If you forget something, it's not the end of the world. Just go into a store and buy it. You don't have to take all of it home. You can discard it. And um, adjust your style. Um, like this is trying to be my uh, I don't really care look that I wouldn't present everywhere but here I'm okay running with it uh, it doesn't require a lot of maintenance right try doing that that's actually one of the things I'm looking forward to when I go bald Okay, and this is the other stuff. Uh, did, I, did I have anything else about the toiletries? I don't think so. So this is all the, all the other stuff. Um, I'm not going to list what other items to bring. That's up to you. Um, but things like, like eyeglasses, um, sunglasses, um, other personal items uh, for your own for your own enjoyment, uh, sport items, for example. Um, I can't take anything that's relative to, to my favorite sport, which is cycling. Unfortunately, it doesn't fit in the carry-on. Um, but people tend to uh, bring a simple thing like a jump rope or do exercises uh, that don't require any equipment, save for perhaps a chair. And they're well written up online. Look at those. But what's important to remember here, uh, if you're bringing documents, especially if you're traveling um, outside of the EU, places that might require visas, passports, make a backup of those documents. Uh, this can be just, um, just a copy, a photocopy, or you could take a digital picture, encrypt it, and store it on your phone, on your laptop. Have a copy so that if your document gets uh, misplaced, you can um, uh, you you still know the identification numbers you have the serial number of that um, you can report it and you can sometimes uh, get it back easier respect restrictions um, NSA or import restrictions as to what you can bring um, I was passing through some airport in uh, in Spain, I forget which one, and uh, there were about six security guys gathered uh, around one tourist laughing their head off because he was bringing uh, a souvenir hatchet, a tiny one like this, which couldn't really be used as a weapon, but you know, that's a, it's just a restriction. Can't do that. Secure your valuables. That's also another reason why if you, if you can just carry it, it's safer. Never put valuables in your checked baggage. Leave some space as other, right? Uh, for souvenirs, for things that you might pick up along the way, like the MCT Summit pens. They don't take up a lot of space, but I might want to get something else here from Helsinki as a, as a souvenir. But for me, the best souvenirs are memories, are, are the times I've spent, I've, are, are pictures, um, and those don't require much space. Okay, now how to pack it. There are a couple of schools here. First one is to roll it. You take each item, let's say of clothing, you roll it. Sometimes you can put rubber bands around it. It takes up less space than if it's folded. And it produces less creases than if it's folded. Um, that's okay for some. Another school of thought is uh, the core method, where you take an object. Uh, it's nice if it's a big flat object like this or, um, let's say, a binder. Um, I wouldn't use my laptop for that unless I was only going point to point and didn't require my laptop along the way. 
and then you take your clothing and you wrap it around in layers. I'm not going to show you, there's a good description online of how to do this. The point is that uh, each layer gets less and less creases because the diameter of the fold gets larger. Um, so your, your most wrinkle-prone items go on the very outside. Send it. Why not? If um, I'm to take a, a couple of books for my students, uh, I, was, I was teaching in Iceland uh, earlier this year, uh, I don't want to put that into my luggage, which can get misplaced, can get lost. Uh, just send it. Have Microsoft send your books. Order them from, from Amazon, sent to your hotel, or sent to the client directly. If um, you're taking a unusually large item that you need to present somewhere, ship it from home. And same goes for reverse. If, you're, uh, if you have something, if you've purchased something while away, you can send it back home. And travelers on, on really lar long trips do this. Uh, they send items back home, especially souvenirs, as they go along. For the packing itself, bulky items first and use internal spaces and things like shoes and others. And next up, what to pack it into. Um, item one on the list, wear it. If, if you've seen the jacket I came in, it has gigantic pockets, right? good for the winter season. Uh, and you can wear stuff on there. There's vests designed to uh, hold everything that you need for uh, flights like, like Ryanair, or like, like Wizz Air, which uh, charge you extra for, uh, for luggage. Not perhaps ideal for the business traveler, uh, depending on how geeky you want to get. And this is an item I didn't bring with me this time, but I own this. Uh, it's called a hip holster by Urban Tool. Uh, it has a place for your phone, for your wallet, for your stuff. It's really, really geeky. And I sometimes wear it to the airport just to have all my things easily accessible. If I have just one other bag that I don't want to keep on opening. Carry it. And this is, this is uh, what is really highly recommended. James May said that uh, yeah, if you can't if you can't pick it up if you can't carry it, you shouldn't be taking it. Or wheel it. Um, that's a wheeled case. Uh, this is not recommended. So uh, this is a case of um, case pun intended. Uh, this is a case of um, do what I say, don't do what I do. I like a wheeled case because I'm aware that all the places I go to uh, will have sidewalks. Uh, will have good ground, and I can roll it. But it makes me less mobile. That case is pretty heavy. It's about four kilograms. The lightest case you can get that size is about one kilogram. But it's nice, it's sturdy. I actually swear by that. I have a smaller version um, that I can take for a weekend. If you've ever seen a movie where they have the um, nuclear launch codes, that's, that's the type of case. And I've gone through security at airports a couple of times and have been asked to gently, I've been asked to decide to gently open it. Um, but, but these are great cases. Um, so it, it's really a personal choice of what you take. But if you can keep your case light, you're also going to want to keep the contents light. And traveling with just six kilograms, you can put that on your, on your shoulder and just carry it everywhere. Do you need uh, to show up somewhere to a business meeting with uh, a nice leather attache? Or d can you just bring a nylon case with you? It all really depends on, on your situation, on, on uh, how you want to present your style. And again, uh, respect limits, in this case, carry-on limits. Uh, notice that there's no international standard for this. Um, each airline can uh, choose their own limitations for carry-ons.
Now, um, when has uh, traveling with luggage uh, hindered me? Uh, a couple of times. Uh, one time was with um, with Ryanair traveling from uh, from Stansted. Um, after that, I understood what the FR uh, airline code for them, what, what the F stands for. Um, I was uh, I was there a minute late in the uh, in the check-in queue um, because I was rushing through the airport with a carry-on and another piece of luggage. I was I was taking some um, some gifts with me, some uh, things that I bought along the way, and I was standing in line. I was really just a minute late, and they said, "I'm sorry, the flight is closed. We were calling your name." Uh, I asked them to reopen the flight. To add, because I was checked in, I just needed to drop my luggage off. Um, no, we were calling your name. We can't do that. Uh, I just told the lady that uh, she couldn't pronounce my name, so they couldn't have been calling me. Um, what did I have to do? I had to stay another uh, extra day to catch the next flight, uh, or they offered me to uh, offered to to send my luggage at some horrendous price using using um, a courier. Um, but the contents weren't worth that, so I chose to just stay another day. Uh, I only um, had my luggage um, misplaced once. Knock on wood, it doesn't happen again. Um, and it wasn't anything of importance, it was just some gifts that arrived a couple of days late. Mm, what wasn't so great about that is I was traveling home right before Christmas, uh, so what was inside the checked luggage were gifts for Christmas, and I had to do a lot of explaining. Um, but in the end, it worked out fine. Um, what else? What else can I can I tell you about the um, about the carry-ons? It gives you peace to just have something to have just a single piece of luggage. It um, it also impacts the rest of your life, uh, kind of a lifestyle, life changing. Uh, thing if you can learn how to reduce the number of items uh, during your travels, during your work, really, because that's what we do, we travel for work, uh, you might want to also start reducing the number of items you generally have. Right? Curb the number of possessions. Um, and there's there's some people taking that to the extreme as well. Um, I've uh, gone on to a couple of, uh, of, of forums, of, of blogs, um, where people really try to limit the number of items they have at home, not counting chairs or, or cutlery or things like that, but personal possessions. Uh, there was someone uh, who was down to 100 items, just 100 items in their life, not taking up their time, not taking up their energy to, to keep, to manage, to, to buy, to replace. And there were others who were wondering whether a pair of socks is one or two items. Um, but that's, again, taking it to the really, really extreme. So try to travel light. Uh, for your next trip, try to reduce the number of items that you take. Um, have more time for sightseeing, for meeting with people, for, for uh, doing the things you like instead of repacking, instead of uh, making sure that nothing's lost, and, and uh, instead of waiting uh, in the queue to, to pick up your checked-in baggage. Let's all thank our sponsors uh, for making these sessions available and uh, possible. And uh, that's it from me.